Nos van a hablar ahora de... De... Bueno, antes de nada... Buenas a todos, chavales. Otro viernes más. Con el Star Citizen Live. Que en este caso es... Eh, el equipo de Estados Unidos... De características del universo persistente. Nos van a hablar de la refactorización de la carga. Eh, todo lo que tenga que ver con el nuevo manager app para lo que son los... Eh, Temas de inventario y demás historias. Eh, y bueno, cositas que nos van a venir en la, en la 3.15 relacionadas con el tema de los inventarios y, y demás, ¿no? Y pinta... Pinta interesante. Así que eso. Sin más... Cuando salga la 3.14 Lo que vamos a querer es que salga la 3.15 Porque la 3.15 va a ser muy vasta Y porque probablemente lo que vayamos a ver en este live eh, Sea bastante jodidamente eh, Bestia Es posible En cuanto a posibilidades Porque acuerdo que también nos van a hablar sobre eh, Vender cosas, el botín Vender en las tiendas, eh Recoger cositas, vender las tiendas, o sea, el loop de loteo de que vas a un sitio y recoges un mogollón de movidas y te las llevas y las vendes. No solo simplemente ir a hacer la misión, matas a un NPC que parece que ha salido del congelador de, un, de, de los helados del bar. <risa> o sea, que, que la cosa va a cambiar. Buenas, Muki. Hola por 25, Monkey. <ríe> ya ves, Monkey, ¿qué tal te va, tío? Joder, hoy me tienen que notificar de, de si soy... O sea, me bueno, entre hoy y mañana, creo que es. A ver. Vale, Sergas informa que el resultado de la prueba PCR ha dado negativo. Chavales, estoy oficialmente fuera de la jodida cuarentena. Me puedo ir a tomar un café al puto bar mañana. Espectáculo Joder USPU Feature Team I'm your host Jared Huckabee And joining us on the show this week are three members of our esteemed USPU feature team. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about today so we're going to jump right into it with some quick introductions because everybody sh every show is somebody's first show. We're going to start immediately to my right here. Uh, Chad Who are you? What do you do for Star Citizen? Yeah, hi, my name is Chad McKinney and I'm a lead gameplay engineer on the USPU gameplay team. And what's a what's an engineer do? Yeah, we program, we, we make the features in the engine that, you know, in, in coordination with design. So we actually, you know, make, make the fun stuff is the way I like to put it. Okay, uh, Ben, no stranger to Inside Star Citizen, but Who are you for Star Citizen Live? Hi, I'm Ben Dorsey. I am a senior systems designer on USPU, um, which means that I um, do a lot of the planning and coordination and then some of the implementation um, for a few various things. In this case... Uh, eh, bueno, me he saltado... Like he estado haciendo ahí una movida, uh, chicos. Like, me he saltado uh, el tema de... Tales or jump town. <coughs> me he saltado el tema de lo que están diciendo, pero... <laughs> Eh, Rob, eh, Rob, Rob Runnigers no se parece a... 
Yeah. yeah. So it's uh, classically working with the USPU team here. Is Todd Puppy on skin? Chun, chun, chun. <laughs> Getting to work more with our SST team and the MFT team here in the future. Uh, so we'll be getting, getting quite involved with the, the simulation here moving forward. And uh, once again, congratulations on your Sharks themed uh, uh, office paint job. It's It was nice. I, I saw it the other day. It was cool. Still there. <laughs> yeah. It's waiting for you when you return to office. All right. Awesome. So uh, on today's show, we are talking uh, U.S. features. So. What does that mean? Every team in Star Citizen works on a finite number of features. Not every team works on every feature in the game. We also are on the road to Digital Citizen Con. So there are lots of uh, uh, topics and subjects uh, being uh, held close to our chest right now in preparation for the various panels and presentations that are coming on October 9th. Ya nos, ya nos está avisando de que... Eh, tienen un foco en lo que está en este, este equipo y que hay cantidad de cosas que se están guardando eh, bueno, hay una, ciertos topics que se están guardando para la salida de la, de la Citizen Con el 9 de octubre most uh, and one of the biggest topics that was voted up was cargo refactor so we're going to start we're going to start with some questions on the Sweet. cargo refactor first um, right off the bat why don't we just set the stage here what is the cargo refactor and what isn't the cargo refactor? Sure. What, what are we actually? Claro, ¿qué es el, qué es el cargo refactor? Porque hay muchas preguntas relacionadas con eso. ¿Qué es lo que es, no? The cargo can be refactored in many ways to help make the game play better. We've obviously got the cargo profession that we're working towards, but specifically the way cargo worked. So in the past here, uh, up till we re finished this, um, when you bought something from a shop, it got statically placed into your ship's cargo hold and you could not interact with it. Uh, when the ship exploded, we kind of jettisoned out, you know, smaller versions of the boxes that you could actually grab and, and take back to your ship, uh, which could then be sold at, at a shop somewhere. But this refactor is going to give us a kind of a clean slate as far as how we define what our commodities are. There was some, some stuff that was just legacy that caused problems that we wanted to fix. Uh, but the big thing for the players is that it's going to be physicalized in the cargo within the cargo grid. Uh, it also sets us up for some other stuff that we're going to talk about in a bit, you know, persistent hangers and just the, the cargo gameplay as a whole. But uh, from the player's perspective, it's it's the physicalization of the cargo. You can now tractor beam stuff off the grid. Uh, you can also tractor beam stuff onto the grid. You're also going to be able to jettison larger size boxes, right? So it's not just going to be this. Ah, lo, que es, lo, que, lo que dice que es el cargo refactor, sobre todo para los jugadores, lo que significa es la fisicalización de los palés de carga que llevamos en nuestra nave. De tal manera que ahora mismo cuando, cuando nosotros destruimos una nave, pues se genera eh, unos bienes o unas commodities, ¿no? Eh, como resultante de esa destrucción, si la nave lleva carga, pero que realmente no, no es la carga real que lleva la nave. Entonces, con la refactorización de la carga... Eh, pues eh, la, la parte más importante que vamos a percibir los jugadores es precisamente esa fisicalización de eso de esa especie de palés que llevamos en la en la nave. Commodities that you'll want to trade, but they'll also be things that are inventory containers as well that can contain actual items and they can nest. So inventory containers themselves are entities. So this can mean that you can be uh, potentially trading in, in, in shipping in your cargo grid inventory as well as commodities which means that looting is, is going to be available for the contents inside of the cargo grids as well and the contents as you move them around the, the localization Claro, están hablando de, de una cuestión bastante importante y es que eh, también estamos hablando de los cargo containers, los contenedores de, de carga que vamos a poder interactuar con ellos para meter objetos, eh, sacar objetos y esto significa que también afectará a lo que es la, los cargo grids eh, o sea, lo, los palés de carga, ¿no? Para, para poder pues, eh, sacar cosas de ellos, o sea, que también formará parte del, del loteo con este nuevo sistema de fiscalización de la carga. Or the mole. So there's a couple of questions in there. So let's do the first one. Uh, will, we, will we be able to take cargo from other people uh, forcibly or with permission? That, as long as you can access it, uh, whether it be through, you know, their cargo grid, getting into their ship somehow, if you can disable the ship without blowing it up, right, and can get in, sneak onto their ship, you can maybe get off with some valuable packages. Um, so yeah, and then I guess one of the things that we kind of miss talking about the, the refactor here is that this, the, the way that the prospector bags, for instance, were, were set up uh, was that they were all kind of part of the ship, right? It was just an animated pod, but that this will set us up to allow us to detach those. Uh, 
Claro, están comentando que si otra persona podrá interactuar con eh, tu carga y demás. Eh, está comentando de que si alguien se las apaña para poder deshabilitar tu nave y poder entrar, eh, sí, sí que podría, pero también eh, con más cosas como por ejemplo la Prospector. La Prospector y la carga ahora mismo... Eh, digamos que no, no funciona de, de, como, como debería, ¿no? de forma eh, fiscalizada, como quieren hacer ellos, sino que eh, con este sistema vamos a poder eh, desanclar lo que es los, los cargo pods eh, de, de una prospector para, para que alguien se los lleve. Really, just some data and, and some persistent yeah. representation, and we're changing it to be uh, represented as entities. And, and for anyone that's not familiar with like you know game dev terminology, an entity is is this really generic term for just something that like a player might see in the game. So what that means is that um, the cargo boxes, the um, you know those those prospector whatever bag things. Uh, these, these things are going to be things that we have a lot more uh, ability to allow to simulate independently so that they can attach, detach, you can interact with Claro, lo que se nos está diciendo es que en realidad eh, la carga como la conocemos hasta ahora en el verso simplemente son unos eh, datos que, que tienen una determinada persistencia que, que representan, pues, eh, o sea, que, que en realidad que es una representación, que no, no es una una simulación como la que le va a permitir la fiscalización de, de, de o sea, la refactorización de la carga, eh, como son las, las supuestas bolsas que dice que tiene la, la, la Prospector. Esto no, le va a permitir a los desarrolladores eh, poder eh, avanzar en lo que es el aspecto de la simulación o de cómo se trata eh, lo que es la, la carga en sí. ¿no? Claro, al ser una entidad, eh, al pasar la carga a ser una entidad, como, como va a hacer con este sistema, pues va a permitir también que la, que la carga pues, pueda ser dañada. Está hablando de degradación, de y, y como, como es pues un objeto físico, pues van a poder calcular otras otras otro tipo de cosas, ¿no? Keep an eye on the public roadmap. All when questions are answered by the public roadmap. Ah, no. Yeah. As best as we're able to, anyway. Uh, let's see, what else do we got in the cargo factor? In regard to the cargo refactor, will there be any Lego style or snap to option? Uh, or snap to option to get boxes stacked nice and tidy when manually placed by hand or tractor beam or anything else? So that that was one of the things when we were starting to to talk about what this refactor means. Um, this is a bigger feature that, that spans more than just the USPU team, and then much like we're working with the actor feature team on the the personal inventory and the asset manager to kind of help go with that. Um, this is something that that we're going to need to work with them on because that's a personal player experience uh, thing that they you know that's the mining tool or the tractor beam or the 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 pa tool, right? ¿Habrá alguna manera de, de, de poder colocar bien las cajas eh, o, o alguna asistente, por así decirlo, ¿no? para, para colocar las cajas eh, tipo piezas de Lego y demás, eh, con un rayo tractor y demás? Y está diciendo que esto tiene que esto es algo que tienen que trabajar con, con más equipos, eh, que, o sea, con, que, que desarrollan el, el rayo tractor y tal. Pero, pero sí que cuando, cuando empiecen a trabajar y, y vean qué soluciones consiguen, consiguen sacar, pues... Nos irán comentando, nos irán comentando más de esto, ¿no? Yeah, technically we're implementing it, expecting that coming, and it's it's a planned part. The first release of cargo may not include direct interaction and, and Lego style snapping, but um, the functionality under the hood from the cargo system will support it. Okay. Uh, now, folks who have been uh, who who've been paying attention to uh, social media today have noticed that the Star Citizen account announced that 3.14 is expected to go live later today. Uh, talking about 3.14, one of the one of the new uh, um, highlight features of that is our Nine Tails Lockdown uh, dynamic event that we've talked to in the past, uh, Ben. Uh, we have a couple questions about Nine Tails Lockdown. Does this event trigger from in-game actions? Or is it like Xenothreat where it's scheduled and, and started by the developers? 
Bueno, están comentando de que va a salir eh, eh, hoy a, pues a, a la tarde-noche o más tarde. Va a salir la 3.14 a live y están preguntándole si, si, el, si el Nine Tiles es eh, activado con, por acciones de jugadores o, o, o es activado por, desarroll, por desarrolladores. Está diciendo que ahora mismo que es activado por ellos, que no, que no está todavía eso planeado que, que decía Tony Z, pero está planteado que en algún momento pues eso eh, sea de esa manera. Nine Tails thinks that they have a shot, or even just doing missions for them to the point where they get enough resources as an organization to kind of um, build up the fleet that they need to do these kinds of things. And and that's for all world events in the future. That is the plan that eventually these are all kind of driven by that simulation of what's going on and player actions. Gotcha. And if you want to know even more about Nine Tails, claro, están diciendo que el futuro de de, la, de todos los eventos del juego es que de alguna manera pues sean activados. Estos eventos dinámicos que sean activados por acciones de jugadores o incluso una organización que se pueda permitir organizar una flota eh, lo, lo suficientemente eh, competente como para activar este tipo de eventos, que la idea que es esa, ¿no? Es, es eh, que se vayan activando de esa manera. Login locations. If it is where you were set, then you you stay there. Yes, uh, I do not do anything to affect you there whatsoever. Um, that's not to say that we never will, uh, particularly if in some distant future there's a time when they actually take over that station that might have some ramifications to people there that aren't friendly with nine tails but um for now no you will log back in right on that station there's an opportunity for some uh, juicy game starts en el caso de que se produzca un evento de nine de nine tails lockdown en esa estación eh, tendría alguna repercusión para la gente que no tiene alineación con los eh, nine tails y demás eh, la gente que tiene casa ahí fijada en esa estación en cruel 1 en, en este caso está comentando que, que ahora mismo que no pero en el futuro sí que eh, tendría la posibilidad de poder hacer que eso que eso efectivamente afecte a, a jugadores que tengan reputación de esa manera Uh, next week. Okay. Um, Chad, one of the su subjects that we posted about on Spectrum that's like, garnered a lot of like perked ears and like, what? What is this? Procedural character generation. So let's start with the basics. What is it and what isn't it? ¿Qué es la generación procedural de personajes? So this is part of, uh, I would say, a much larger, larger initiative of Tony, so if you, you've been paying attention, you'll see all these big ideas being thrown about, about like dynamic populations, and virtual AI, and missions, and all this stuff. And at a certain point, uh, you have to ask the question of how are these things being populated? Where does the content come from? And then whenever you start thinking about that, you also start to wonder about, okay, well, what about the locations in the game? What about just the universe that we're trying to build, the number of solar systems we're, you know, intending to make. And quickly we run up on a problem, which is that we really just cannot reasonably hand author all of the characters in the game to get the scale that we're looking for and get the dynamism that we're looking for and to get the kind of, uh, I would say, kind of persistence that we're looking for and the reaction to the character, the players in the game. So procedural character generation is, uh, you know, one tool to address this problem. And the idea is essentially that instead of hand offering, you know, the vast majority of the characters in the game, uh, take, which takes a lot of time, right? There's a lot of very manual markup that's very bespoke. Um, you know, for example, you know, may, people may not be aware, but like, if you just take like a random engineer in the game, right? Uh, there would be like a hundred variants of this that hand authored loadouts have been created for them in order to add the kind of variety in the game that you hope to see. Uh, and even still, right, people notice the, the repetition, right? You'll, you'll see the same characters. And the thing is, you, you want a certain amount of that. You want a certain amount of seeing the same characters in similar scenarios. Um, but at a certain point, there's a kind of uncanny valley where it's like, okay, that person was just walking over there and now I see them over here, right? So the idea is that by using a, a process that's a kind of seated randomness that is designer guided, with a, with, that's rules driven, we can kind of work from, how would, I, how would I describe it? I would say you can kind of work from like what the world that we want to build is backwards to a set of rules that allow us to generate characters to fill out that world in a way that is 
a combination of varied and makes sense. So this is the tricky bit. Um, for any kind of procedural system, you're going to have challenges where uh, if you don't have enough kind of semantics built into the system, you're going to have just incredibly varied results. They're going to be quite heterogeneous. And what it's going to mean is that it's just going to seem like random. It's going to seem like there's no sense to it. You get variety, but it doesn't seem like there's any sensibility that ties it together. Once you start constraining that with any set of rules, then what you end up as a problem is the opposite. You end up with something quite homogenous. You know, if you go look at, for example, um, no man's sky and all, all the planets where right? they're using a procedural system to generate, you know, their 18 quintillion planets or something, which is very cool. Um, but at that certain point, you see enough planets, there's a sameness to it. And that's that's going to be true of any procedural system. So the trick is how do you how do you balance it to get the variety that you want, but still sculpt it to have the kind of um, this the kind of um, threads that are that are taken through the characters. And, and so what my work is, is to build a system in collaboration with design and collaboration with uh, character art, narrative, all of that to figure out the world that we're trying to build and see how we can encode that into the data for gameplay and, and uh, environmental reasons. And then draw upon that in order to generate characters at runtime that makes sense in situations. And then the cool part is that these are gonna be persistent characters. So you'll be able to see them again potentially on the situation or on the locations so you know everything from shopkeepers to security engineers Vaya, que están hablando un poquito así de, de lo que sería la, la mecánica de generación procedural de, de personajes y lo que lo que está hablando es eh, que cuando cuando tenemos un universo tan grande como Star Citizen tenemos que tener eh, o sea no podemos hacer todos los personajes que queramos hacer a mano y es algo que hemos visto en Tony Z que nos ha explicado un poco sobre los NPCs y demás y entonces a la hora de a la hora de nosotros eh, en el universo dice hablando él no a la hora de nosotros generar en, en el universo pues eh, tenemos que tener cuidado porque si, si ponemos una generación de personajes eh, demasiado variada eh, para todo pues eh, aparecerán casos en los que no tenga sentido que haya NPCs de ciertos eh, cosas en cierto sitio entonces para eso necesitamos reglas que definan eh, qué tipo de NPCs aparecen en ciertas zonas de, del mundo, pero así, al hacer eso pues también eh, caes en el problema de, de, que, se, de que resulte repetitivo o, eh, o los personajes que ves o que te, o que te parezca muy, muy repetitivo lo que es la generación de, de personajes. Entonces, lo que, están, eh, lo que están haciendo, porque dice que eh, es uno de los problemas que tienen los sistemas procedurales, que pasa por ejemplo en, en el No Man's Sky, que cuando tú ves mucho, un montón de planetas, pues al final todos los planetas te tienen como una cierta similitud, te acaban de pareciendo algo tal, que es el problema que tienen lo, los, los, los sistemas procedurales, y ellos lo que están trabajando es, él lo que está trabajando es en coordinación con otros equipos, incluido el equipo de, 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 de personajes y, y de narrativa, y de diseño, es eh, en, en tener un sistema que le permita, pues... Eh, definir una cierta clase de, 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 de unos valores para, para que se generen unos, unos personajes que además van a ser persistentes, que los vamos a poder eh, ver otra vez en acción, si vamos o los vamos a poder ver en ciertas zonas de, del verso haciendo actividades, y que y pues tratar de conseguir eh, pues una herramienta que permita trabajar a la escala de Star Citizen, pero tratando de cuidarse de, de esa sensación de que sea demasiado repetitivo. ¿no? And the location that he gets spawned drives some of these choices. The the core archetype distinction uh, that some designer set up is the you know another bulk of those choices. Uh, what organization may be another layer of choices, right? So, but it's a, it's a logical you know building up of this character that we no longer have to really like stay on top of so much that oh this, why is this guy here? Somebody just copy and pasted him. Like no no no, this, the the system knows where he needs to go. They know it's cold on the planet, so he's going to be wearing something that's warm, right? We can start to to build all of this stuff together as a single single experience, which is why I kind of threw my hands up in the beginning. I was like, yes, this is. This claro, is... está comentando que a la hora de, de ellos trabajar están están eh, tratando de hacer una herramienta, pues eh, o herramienta, ¿no? Que les permita eh, generar todo en una en una sola experiencia de tal manera de que ellos puedan controlar eh, sin necesidad de intervenir tanto en lo que es el personaje para para pues saber. Eh, a qué comportamiento se va a añadir ese, ese personaje en el, en el verso o qué zonas va a visitar según lo que son esas reglas que tiene definidas 
term. And of course, the, the, the very first module that was ever released in Star Citizen's development was our personal hangar system. So uh, there, there's a lot of, when, they, when we hear the term precision hangars, there's a lot of misconceptions that I immediately arise uh, going back, linking one to the other. So right off the bat, our first question is, what is the difference between persistent hangers and the personal hangers that citizens... ¿Cuál es la diferencia que hay entre hangares personales y hangares persistentes? Here was, at least to my knowledge, was that the, these personal hangers were actually meant to be some place that was in the game. Um, you know, asteroid hangers were supposed to be on some place like Grim Hex or wherever. Um, the, the Revel in York was supposed to be a microtech hangar, right? So it's... I, I would not necessarily look at them as different places, but what we're going to provide is is a place that you can customize. You can leave stuff and on the floor, and when you come back, it will be there. It it is your place, kind of like the Habs, where you can kind of go and dump stuff in your Habs, but but on a much larger scale. Um, these are, these will be things that you can buy. They'll be yours. You can rent them, maybe um, things of that nature, right? Uh, it'll allow players to manage larger scales of cargo, things like that. Uh, you know, you can store, like hangars are pretty big, right? So you can line some cargo up down one side and then spawn a different ship and then whoop, put it on that one. Um, so it's, in a nutshell, it's, it's, it's taking that personal hangar and really just kind of transplanting that into the game and allowing the game to persist it uh, in whatever state you leave it. Yeah, I mean, if I could just add, I would say that persistent hangars are kind of a superset of hangers where they include the personal hangers, which are now persistent, um, but also will include other hangers that you could potentially interact with for, for other reasons. Because we're now going to make them something that you own, that means that there's going to be some locality tied to them. And there are going to be situations in the game where you may not have access to a, a hanger that you actually own at a given location. And there are going to be a set of processes in place that still allow you to facilitate certain game en resumidas cuentas, los hangares personales y los hangares persistentes, el hanga los hangares persistentes englobarían a los hangares personales eh, con la diferencia de que pues, eh, un hangar eh, persistente, pues simplemente los, los hangares pues, a la hora de hacer cosas en ellos o, o, o tal, pues imaginar que llegamos a un hangar de Gringes, pues ese hangar va a tener persistencia a lo que está sucediendo ahí o, o está pasando ahí. Eh, a diferencia de, de un hangar eh, personal, pues que podrías pues alquilarlo tal o decorarlo o, o guardar carga, eh, funcionaría como, como un hub de, de vivienda, pero eh, a una escala más grande. Y sería pues podríamos ser propietarios de, de ese hangar, ¿no? That are kind of fleet, their 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 gameplay set. Right. So the, the the player hangers that people are familiar with, the Rebel in York and the and stuff like that, uh, those are under the umbrella, the greater umbrella of precision hangers. But when they see the first version of precision hangers show up on the roadmap and you know eventually make its way into the game, uh, it is not that right away. It is it is working with the hangers that are are there in game today. You know the Area 18 ones and the Lorville ones and and. Claro, los, los, hangares, los hangares persistentes es, se refiere a los hangares que vemos hoy en día en las ciudades. Los hangares personales va a ser otra cosa diferente que todavía no está, pero que están englobados, nuevamente dicen, dentro de lo que es la, el, los hangares persistentes. Your hangar. Uh, instead of hangar 27, it's, you know, Rob's hangar, uh, Rob's medium hangar, whatever. Um, and just like any other hub or, or persistent location, you can go there. Now, the, the only thing that Uh, like we're not going to build like one hangar entrance for every single player that's actually on the server, right? Or or in the game as a whole, it's uh, going to be controlled through ATC. So you're going to contact ATC, say, "Hey, I'm ready to go," and and Chad can talk maybe about uh, more of the the technical side of this of how we're going to be bouncing you know players around. But basically, we're going to take you, we're going to move you while you're doing your stuff inside your hangar, and then, "Hey, I'm ready to go." ATC gives you clearance. That opens up a door, doors open, you fly out directly into the city, and it's all from your persistent hangar space. Yeah, so I'll just go a little bit into detail on that. So the idea is that no matter what, uh, for now, we're going to have the locations that don't have the number of hangers to support even the current player limit, let alone whatever we yeah. increase that to with server meshing, right? So for that reason, we we're always going to have this problem of too many players mapped to too few hangers. 
However, we do want to maintain the, the kind of player experience of feeling like you do own a hangar at a certain location for even these ones when they're too few. And so for that reason, we're actually going to pin the players to particular hangar entrances so that in your experience as a player, you'll go land somewhere, you'll, you'll fly away from somewhere, and it's always from the same hangar at that location physically. Now, there is, you know, the players uh, may notice that there's going to be a kind of you know, magical sensibility to it, which because if we have a hundred players in the server or whatever, or even the current 50, then, you know, the same players will be using the same hangar entrance and exits, you know, how's that possible? And the reason is, is because there's some magic happening behind the, the hood where we're, we're magically moving these things around and we're using zones to isolate them from each other. Um, so that you don't see the fact that they're, you know, all getting kind of intermixed, but the experience for the players is that it's one continuous experience in and out. Now, that's for these locations, again, that have a more limited set. We absolutely, with this system, can expand it to have locations with larger amounts of hangers, which would then allow us to do things like individually put down um, persistent hangers for players. And you know that would probably have to work in accordance with some kind of procedural system for, for placing out very large numbers of them. And we do, you know, I, you know, I know this comes up a lot. Players are very aware that we have we have the real estate, right? We have these huge planets. Vale, esta peña definitivamente está loca. Eh... <laughs> Eh, pero me encanta porque dicen que, bueno, que eh, por un lado, pues eh, en las ciudades ahora mismo sería imposible tener eh, los suficientes hangares, incluso con los eh, actuales jugadores, para que cada uno tuviéramos nuestro hangar. Eh, que de alguna manera eh, simularán que tú entras en, por una entrada, que siempre entrarás por esa entrada que te da, concederá la PC, pero que eh, de alguna manera cuando estés dentro del hangar, como que mágicamente te desplazarás o te moverás y, y como que no será físico todo lo que es el, el hangar, pero están hablando de que en el futuro, eh, cuando el juego escale más, pues efectivamente eh, sí que está la posibilidad de hacer eh, localizaciones que sí tengan esos hangares eh, fisicalizados y personalizados, hacer grandes estructuras y que ahí pues sí que sea una, una posibilidad. Mix and match, but of course, as the game progresses and expands and stuff like that, we certainly do have the real estate to, to... Claro, dice que eh, a medida que el juego evoluciona, dice Discolando que sí que tiene el objetivo de empujar y empujar eh, hacia lo que es el realismo, en ese sentido, ¿no? De los hangares. To shopping, trading and selling and stuff. Uh, will we be able to give play other players access to drop cargo off in our hangars? Uh, yeah, so what we want to build is this concept of a freight elevator that is tied to whoever's using it. So when you use it, you see your local inventory stored at, at Area 18. When I use it, I see mine. So now what you get is the ability for you to bring your cargo out into my hangar, load it on my ship. We can collectively work together as a group to then load the ship up with a, a series of goods, take it to another location, and then... Eh, dice que eh, tienen el concepto, tienen la idea de que de para poder compartir la carga, si otros jugadores van a poder llevar nuestra carga o vamos a poder cargar nuestra carga en otras naves de otros compañeros. Entonces, la idea que tienen es de hacer un elevador eh, que sea un montacargas y en ese montacargas eh, nosotros lo que vamos a hacer va a ser abrir el, el, el elevador y en ese elevador pues vamos a ver la posibilidad de poder llevar nuestra carga. Entonces, podremos abrir ese elevador común que va a haber en todos los hangares, podremos abrirlo en el hangar de otra persona y efectivamente eh, desde, desde, ese, desde ese elevador seleccionar la carga para traspasarla a la nave de nuestro colega. Mola mucho. Mola muchísimo eso. There was quite a dramatic change to the way that cargo works implied in that hand. Yes. Which is that we're not going to be magically spawning the cargo into your ship whenever you purchase cargo. Instead, it's going to be purchased into the hangar and you you'll be calling it from the spread elevator. And then manually moving it in and out of the, the kind of staging space. And Claro, están, están diciendo que ahora mismo no significa que tú vas a poder comprar <coughs> directamente en la nave eh, a través de, por ejemplo, una consola de administración. Nosotros vamos a una estación, a la consola de administración, compraremos, la guardaremos en el hangar y a la hora del hangar veremos este elevador mágico, por así decirlo, en el que nosotros podremos ahí seleccionar nuestra carga y efectivamente cuando vayamos al hangar del compañero, desde ahí podemos trasladar nuestra carga a la nave del compañero. <coughs> 
And so, you know, this is one way in which people that are playing together will have an advantage over. Claro, o sea, estamos hablando de eh, llevar la, la carga, pues, utilizando multitools, utilizando, pues, lo que sea, carritos, tal, llevarla, o sea, irla trasladando la carga a la nave mediante, de forma física, desde ese elevador de carga, ¿no? That, you know, multiplayer <coughs> interactive diegetic physical gameplay into the cargo system. You all laughed at the trolleys. You said the trolleys were silly. No. I'm just... Uh, uh, Chad is already talking about an LTI forklift. I'll pass it on, folks, but who knows. No, uh, it's, it's a big deal, though. And, and uh, actually, well, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it with selling here. So. All right. So... Um, We know that there's a there, 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 there's a there's a big refactor to or a big expansion rather probably more accurate to personal inventory and stuff coming, uh, and along with that, loot generation and along with that, uh, an increased need to be able to sell and trade things off. Absolutely. So, um, talk to us about what our what, what our what our scope of that is. I, I know it's you know we're not like with most things we ne we don't get to do everything we want to in the first drop. Sure. So yeah. What, it, Why don't we just start there? What is next for selling, trading, shopping, asset managing? ¿Qué es lo siguiente para el tema del el tradeo, venta, el, el manejador de recursos? We can go out, we can buy stuff, we can already sell commodities. So the, the next logical step was to be able to sell personal items or ship items back to shops. Uh, just offloading, uh, you know, you bought 57 different ships, but you're just like, you know, I just want to manage, you know, a small set of power plants or, or whatever that's that's a doable thing now um the the goal is to start with those item types um generally kind of mm. limit them to the, the types of items that the store will have for sale right uh and then you know go from there the selling ships back to you know a dealer uh is going to be a, in a future tier right Uh, but the the important part is, you know, when we start going to loot generation, you're going to be able to collect a lot more stuff. May or may not be valuable, but it's it's another form of being able to be rewarded within the game to be able to go and sell it somewhere. So that's a uh, it closes uh, several you know gameplay loops that uh, are either. Claro, la siguiente estadía será poder vender componentes de nuestras naves, objetos personales. Eh... El, el hecho también de en un tier más superior el poder vender nuestras naves al, al vendedor de vuelta. We're, we're not going to do it at the physical item level, uh, the, the Moby Glass level. We're going to try and phase out that Moby Glass uh, UI at, at some point. Um, but the, the, in, in converting it to building blocks, we can kind of re-envision that flow a little bit and try and make it a little more user-friendly. Um, selling things in stacks, buying things, you know, in larger volumes, um, and and these these things will all be. Uh, if you buy things, they're going to get you know sent to your local inventory. If you sell things, you can only sell things from your from your person, from your ships that are in that location, from your local storage that's in that location. So, again, kind of leaning into that, you know, items are localized within the world concept. Uh, it's it's going to fall in line with all that. Claro, con el futuro con el Building Blocks también podrán agilizar eh, la forma de vender y demás. Y, y sería pues la... Want to buy or some of the more common mechanics in other MMOs. Uh, related to all this, are, are we going to allow players to trade between themselves? Like with an old style MMO? Mi pregunta, es uh, mi pregunta, with, chicos. Without, uh, what is the app? The MoTrader app? Is that what's called? MoTrader? Yep. Uh, short answer, yes. Uh, absolutely. Long answer... Um, there's a series of Confluence pages with, to be clear, the, the current MoTrader app is not even tier one, it's tier zero of what we want, want to implement for that. Um, with just plan after plan for how to expand upon that in, in gradated bits, um, to include player trading. There's talk even of having it be that there might be like shipping times on that, that you might hire a shipping company then players could be that shipping company. So yes, absolutely player trading of items between each. Esto mola muchísimo. Están diciendo que la MeoTrader, la, la aplicación está muy verde ahora mismo, que, que en el futuro pues, evolucionará hasta el punto de incluso de que podamos, eh, efectivamente, dice que totalmente sí, que, que vamos a poder eh, vender cosas entre jugadores y que además eh, vamos a poder, eh, o sea, entre medias habrá un servicio de envío, que los jugadores podrán hacerse cargo de esos envíos de, de los productos. So you can't, there are no updates to give. Uh, and I'm talking to you, Ben, Merchant and Crowd. When it's in development, we'll, we'll tell you. 
<risa> Están hablando de la marchama. Uh, ok, ok, cuando esté en el desarrollo uh, hablaremos de ello. Loot, are there plans to be able to resell a ship purchased with AUEC? Uh, it would be nice to be able to get rid of entries on ASOP for ships that maybe I don't care for after I have purchased them. Sure, I, I mean, that's the plan, right? Is we want you to be able to, to sell your ships back if you don't, it, basically anything in the game, if you, if you don't want it anymore. We want to give the players a way to manage their inventory and call it down to the... Claro, dice que eh, están preguntando si van a poder vender eh, vuestras naves, de, vamos a poder vender nuestras naves cuando las compremos con OEC. Dice que básicamente que todo, que vamos a poder vender todo lo que hay en el juego, que la idea es poder vender todo lo que tengamos eh, en la tienda si no lo queremos usar. Hide this and, you know, show, you know, give, give your... The ability to hide certain entries, uh, but they're still there, right? Uh, all the way to selling them to to do another stuff. So it's, um, you know, we we want to eventually be able to take ships to junk sites and you know scrap them. And and you know, if you're a pirate, right? That's that's a big question in the game. It's like, how do I steal something, and sell this big ship? Well, that's that's pretty. Uh, that's got to be a pretty complicated and, and you know dangerous thing. But that's you know stuff that CR has talked about in the past, right? So it's. Uh, it's all in an effort to build up towards. Están hablando de, wow, quiero ser un pirata y quiero robar una nave y venderla. Y dice que son conversaciones que estamos teniendo desde hace un tiempo. O sea que eh, robar naves, vender naves robadas, que sí, que es algo que. <risa> And for that reason, on the back end and in the persistent layer, we're doing a lot more tracking. We're, we use a lot more safety mechanisms regarding ships. Yeah. If you, you know, because of a bug or whatever, lose a, a weapon or an item or something like that, it's not that big of a deal. Um, but losing a ship is, you know, the amount of money that's going into these, the amount of time that's going into them is dramatic. So for that reason, uh, we would have to account for that, for example, in LTP. Uh, and to date, we don't remove things from LTP. So that's a that's you know as soon as you you do something like that, you open yourself up to a set of you know bugs that you have to be very cautious about on the technical side. That you're very confident when you go out, you're not going to start just blasting people's like very persistent data that they've worked hours and hours on. So we're we're being cautious on that part. Uh, and it's it's not that we don't you know know how to do it or. Um, you know, don't want to do it. It's it's more that we want to be careful on that one, <laughs> for, for sure. For sure. Uh, let's see. Let's move into some more general terms. Claro, están hablando de que a la hora de, ro de robar naves de otros o venderlas o tal, que las naves es un poco más complicado, un poco más complejo por el hecho de la cantidad de horas, la cantidad de dinero que lleva. Eh, que tienen en cuenta lo que es la, la, la experiencia del jugador o lo que puede suponer por eso, de, debido a bugs o a problemas que pueda haber en el juego. Entonces, eh, a, a, a medida que tengan la confianza suficiente de que, de que el juego está preparado para recibir ese tipo de de mecánica pues sucederá, pero eh, que quieren eh, ser eh, tener precaución, ser precavidos a la hora de, de tratar con ese tema porque saben, o sea, son conscientes de que es algo que impacta mucho en lo que es el, el, la, la jugabilidad, ¿no? Lo que es el, 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 la jugabilidad del jugador. Si eso significa uh, hauling cargo de place a place, there will be reputation for it. If that means uh shooting people along a trade route as a pirate there will be reputation for that both good and bad if that means stealing big benny's machines and going and building weird neolithic monuments on a moon um for some reason i'm sure narrative would have a problem with it but there might be a reputation for that uh with some weird organization so yes uh there will be reputation for illegal things for non-violent things for all kinds of things Claro, están preguntando qué tipo de reputaciones habrá. Está diciendo que habrá reputaciones de otro tipo, que es incluso que si queremos montar eh, un, una estructura con máquinas Big Ben y robadas en la luna, pues que podría, eh, aunque en la narrativa no le mole mucho, dice eh, el equipo narrativa, pues que podría, podría, podría haberlo. O sea, habrá, habrá reputaciones de, para tanto para cosas eh, de, de no violentas como, como de piratería, como legales, como muchísima reputación, ¿no? This is going to work in the game and and that's actually something we're going to talk about uh, in a bit more detail, detail with Citizen Con. Yeah. So I'm excited to show you some plans for that. Uh Jason to the cargo refactor and we'll get back to that in a minute. Will the cargo refactor include a meaningful overhaul of the economy itself uh for updated profit and investment ratios? 
I, I think it has to. Um, you know, one of the things that we want to do is, is sell things kind of by the box, not like this per unit, because the, it does a lot of different things when we start to go down that road where uh, it takes a certain amount of money to get into a box, a super valuable box that's this big. Um, whereas, you know, I can, I can get into like the, the really cheap stuff in larger volumes, maybe the really expensive stuff. I can only buy in, in smaller quantities, but I've got to get a certain amount of it in order to, it's like buying a lot size on the, on the stock market, right? You got to buy it in a hundred unit lots, uh, similar principle, uh, with what we want to do for the cargo at it. And it kind of ties to, you know, the whole sea in these large containers that, that we need to, to have to facilitate those. Um, but it, it's abs I, I don't see how we can't, you know, do that. Like it's, it's mandatory hundred percent. Uh, let's move back to the cargo refactor a bit. When it comes to loading and unloading of cargo in space, docking arms for ships and in hangars, uh, how do you plan to protect the player ship from, from someone coming on board during a manual loading process and flying away or stow stowing on board, stowing away on board? Uh, basically, how can players protect themselves during this vulnerable time? Yeah, I, I think the bigger question is how are you going to protect your ship? and your cargo that's being loaded and unloaded on your ship. Uh, who are you gonna work with to make that, that a safe thing? I mean, to me, that's, that's where multiplayer gameplay just shines, right? And, and it's, how, you know, you wanna hire some friends, so eventually we wanna have NPCs that you can hire. Uh, maybe your reputation's high enough where, where turrets at the station will actually help protect you, right? Um, so, you know, we, you're gonna see reputation being tied into a lot more things as we move forward. Um, and certainly... Y nos están preguntando lo de, eh, bueno, de, 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 de entrada está diciendo que con la refactoración de carga que es necesario, es mandatorio, ¿no? es necesario que, que cambie totalmente lo que es la economía como la, como la conocemos ahora y va a cambiar especialmente, pues, eh, eh, por ejemplo, con el tema de las, de las Hulce y esas eh, grandes eh, cargas que va a llevar, esos grandes containers. Aparte eso está diciendo de cómo vamos a evitar, o sea, cómo van a evitar el hecho de que un jugador entre en una nave mientras tú estás haciendo una carga, estás eh, cargando una, un cargamento. Y dice que la pregunta más bien es cómo vais a hacer vosotros, o sea, cómo vamos a hacer nosotros los jugadores para, para evitar eso. Tendremos que contratar a algunos amigos o, o tratar de hacer una escolta. Eh, que, eh... And then get all the way into their hangar, right? So there, it's just a lot less likely that this is going to happen. And so for the first outing, yeah, it's, it's probably going to be a little bit more manual. Claro, y están, están hablando de que al final eh, pues también habrá reputaciones para que las torres se defiendan, que las reputaciones van a ir mucho más allá de lo que, de lo que vemos ahora, y que para que alguien se colase en, en tu hangar, pues tendría que, que, que colarse precisamente contigo en el, en el elevador para poder acceder al hangar. Eh, de, de alguna manera y que es mucho más difícil que, que, que eso suceda, ¿no? Yeah, so it's, it's a little bit safer than I think maybe Rob, you know, I mean, well, and, and, and I, uh, I think one thing that we've kind of blurred the line between a little bit here is that, you know, the, the cargo refactor is physicalizing cargo. It's, it's not going to change the shopping flow for that particular feature. Persistent hangers is where cargo gameplay flow is going to be the, the, the big thing that changes that. So, Uh, when it comes to shops, shops are still populated, you know, and while your ships despawn, uh, you know, behind the scenes there. It just means that as a player, once it gets spawned on the landing pad, you can walk into the ship and take it out if you can get in there. Uh, it's it's physicalized at that point. So uh, the persistent hangar work is what's really going to drive this entire gameplay flow of, of the, the manual loading and working with friends and collaborating on that level. Uh, and then you will be much safer behind the, the doors of your uh, of your hangar. So making things harder to do is, is like I kind of mentioned, like stealing ships, like that should be really hard. Like it should be really hard to get into somebody's hangar. Like maybe you got to kind of sneak on their ship and then, you know, be a stowaway all the way back to get inside their hangar. And now now you, you, you can wreak havoc. But it's it takes an effort and it's a, a you know, I'm sure players are going to do it. I guarantee it. They're, they're going to. Claro, están diciendo que además que no, no es como si entras en un, en un hangar y te llevas la carga y ya está, sino que ahora todo va a estar eh, fisicalizado. Vas a tener que realmente eh, llevar las cajas, ¿no? De, de transportar las cajas hasta tu nave, que, 
que va a ser mucho más eh, que, que hacer las cosas más eh, va, a ser, va a ser mucho más eh, difícil no lo que es el tema todo de, pues, de cargar la nave y eso pues y por tanto pues colarse en una nave va a requerir y robar una nave va a ser un, un esfuerzo no para ser realmente un, un, una hazaña el hacerlo the new picture. So, the... There are hangars at those stations, right? Cargo decks uh, are places where you know, you make your purchases. Uh, we we originally um, intended that to be where you can kind of drive renting space. We've actually since talked about some additional possibilities of how we're going to manage uh, your overage and 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 is that a, is it capped? Is it just per unit like you pay for, for the storage that you you request for? Maybe that that gets way more expensive the the more you get closer to certain you know uh levels um that you know small stations may not have a lot of space and when once you get up to like thousand scu like man that gets really expensive and it's just not worth it to store that much stuff there so um it, it's I'd, i'd see it maybe morphs a little bit over time here just as far as the the original intent um obviously i, I think one of the the big points was that you know they're, they're not really connected to the outside so people can't really fly their ships in and load it up and go out but that's that's where persistent hangers you know even if you don't own one there you can request a land one uh pay for it you know like 500 uec to go land and then you go in do your shopping load it on your ship and then go and then that hanger disappears from your your persistence right so again it's 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 realizing the the gameplay over time uh that that's this is a huge feature um we've built ya están hablando de los eh, de los hangares de, de carga que dice que en un principio pensaban la posibilidad de, de poder rentar hangares para poder tener eh, carga y que, y que habían pensado en la opción de que, eh, que quizás fuese guiado por la cantidad de espacio que quieres reservar para tú tener tu carga y que si por ejemplo estamos en una estación eh, pequeña pues el, el eh, si el tener una poca cantidad de carga, como era el espacio muy limitado, pues cada vez que estuviese más lleno, entre comillas, pues te sería más caro eh, reservar el, el espacio de carga. Eh, eh, comentan que en el futuro pues eh, la posibilidad estaría de, eh, de también de quizás pues simplemente, el, el aunque no tuvieras un hangar en propiedad en, en esa zona, pues simplemente el alquilar un hangar, eh, pagar por, por tener ese hangar en ese momento... Y, y pues luego pues eh, poder realizar la carga, luego marcharte y luego que se desapareciera lo que es eh, el, el de la persistencia tuya, ¿no? O sea, que se desapareciera de tu, de tu tema. Uh, see how much time we got. All right. With persistent hangers, uh, will the need to equip ships only with the inventory you have in the hangar or at your current location be implemented at the same time? That's actually going to be coming out with these, this new inventory uh change that we're doing so when the asset manager drops the personal inventory uh system is changing right the the pma will be removed uh in lieu of the new personal inner thought inventory that, that you probably see in rich tire and, and company talk about quite a bit uh the vma will also fall in line with that so the vma will still exist but it'll be altered to only show the things that you have at that location or have purchased at that location pero están hablando de qué pasará en el caso de, lo, de, las, eh, de los componentes de la nave, de los, eh, las equipaciones de la nave, eh, con el nuevo sistema de carga, bueno, o sea, de refactorización de, de inventario y demás. Lo que pasará es que eh, solo tendrás acceso eh, el PMA, que es el eh, cómo, cómo manejamos nosotros el inventario de nuestro personaje, para la 3.4 de Zapará, se transformará en el Asset Manager, y además... Eh, el, el tema de la el tema de, del VMA que es el, el de vehículos el vehicle manager eh, lo que vamos a tener es que eh, será modificado para que sí si, si se seguirá conservando por ahora pero seguirá en línea con, con, el, con lo que le va a pasar al, al PMA que es el de personaje pero solo vamos a poder tener acceso a los componentes que tengamos en una ubicación si compramos componentes en New Babbage, pues los tendremos allí y, y ya está y podremos utilizar los que tengamos allí tendremos que ir allí para poder equipar la nave no just not be at that location so of course you can't access it so when you get back to places where you can it'll be there yeah and I think you know there's still some fine details to work exactly yeah. out but probably you know like one way that it could work is uh, if you were at a location where you got captured um, we just store it there if you're somewhere where there's not really reasonably anything close that you could identify as The location where your stuff is, we probably just stuff it in your home location. Um, but as I said, there's some fine details exactly um, to sort. And then, you know, the immediate next question, I'm sure that a lot of people are thinking about, like, how do I know where it ended up? 
right? And, and the answer to that is, well, that's why we have the Asset Manager app, which is to help you understand where your things are in the world. Claro, eh, están comentando a la hora de ir a la cárcel que qué pasará con el inventario en este caso. Bueno, pues que como estás en la cárcel, eh, estarás en una ubicación distinta, no tendrás acceso a ese inventario hasta que salgas de la cárcel y vuelvas y luego tendrás que buscar el inventario donde lo tengas. En caso de que eh, te pillen en prisión en una ubicación, pues eh, están hablando de que o se lleve al hogar o que se lleve a una ubicación determinada y, y, y la gente pues puede preguntarse, pues ¿dónde voy a tener el inventario? Bueno, pues a través del eh, Asset Manager vamos a, vamos a poder ver eh, una, un, una vista de todo el inventario que tenemos en todas las ubicaciones like text-based global search of inventories it's chat you wanna yeah so what it will allow is text-based filtering of local results uh at first but not global text search and the reason for this is because um it's actually uh much more difficult to implement than you might just naively think you have to consider how you're extracting that data out of your backend. The way that we're implementing the new entity graph system is to optimize it for the kinds of queries that Gameplay does most often. And that usually means hierarchical queries. And for this reason, the way that the data is laid out in the database is not conducive to text-based search. Uh, instead, we would have to have a different kind of caching layer in order to facilitate this Um, which is doable. It's it's not that it's not possible. It's just that that's not the work that's currently being done. We're very focused on server meshing, entity graph, persistent streaming, all that stuff. Um, so the people that we would need to work with in order to support that are, are tied up with some very important things right now. And uh, it won't be in, in the, like the global search won't be out in the first uh, outing, but it is something that we definitely talked about and we have some ideas about. Yeah. Eh, están hablando de a la hora de poder filtrar objetos a través del inventario, si te podremos eh, fi, eh, bus hacer búsqueda por texto de pues eh, cualquier cosa, taquiones, por ejemplo, que no podemos hacerlo por ahora porque eh, por el sistema que utilizan, que, que requiere de eh, unas eh, bueno una especie de jerarquía, o sea, un tema de programación avanzado, ¿no? que la gente que la gente que necesitan ellos para poder trabajar en ese tipo de, de, de solución para poder hacer ese, ese filtro de, de inventarios o sea, esos filtros de búsqueda está ahora mismo ocupada con, con otras tareas más importantes como el server mesh we're also limited. pero son conversaciones que han tenido y en el futuro pues están ahí el, el resolver esa situación no results each time uh, just because it, it'll just take longer and longer for things to load so we felt it was better to give you faster results than sí. to create this huge list, wait for it to load, you know, for 15 minutes, right? And then allow you to, to interact with it. Um, so we've actually, I, th I think we've actually turned the, the text-based filtering off right now because the, the, the type subtype or the category stuff was so much more efficient. We're like, hey, let's just, let's nix that and give them a little more space to, to show items. So it's not out of the question. It's just not. No, no, it, it, it was one of the first things I wanted. I'm like, I want to, I want to type, you know, much like Claro, dice que ahora mismo que podremos eh, quizás buscar por categorías, eh, que lo dirías por categorías, pero que, pero que de momento que no es algo que no esté fuera de, de o sea, que no, que no lo vayan a hacer, sino que es algo, una de las primeras cosas que quería hacer eh, era precisamente él, ¿no? Dice que, es, que, que quería pues, que se pudiera buscar por texto, ¿no? Es un juego que maneja tanto much stuff, we have to have those quick and easy ways to not just figure out where, what it is, but where it is and what I need to do to go and get it, how much of it I got, right? What quality, what shape is it in? You know, there's a, there's a bunch of stuff that will be coming into play much more as we move forward. You can send your hate mail. Sí, han dicho que van a enseñar cosas en la con acerca de la, de la reputación, que tienen mandanquita preparada. At, I tried uh, uh, Chet, so he, hard. He, he, was, he wasn't calling you naive, he was just calling Director Gunner. It was, that was directed specifically to Director Gunner. Yeah. Everybody else is fine. Yeah. He, he just meant Director Gunner. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I'm picking on Director Gunner. Uh, Will reputation affect selling price or taxes on trading or selling loot at some point in the future? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. eh, ¿Afectará la reputación a, a la venta, a los precios de venta o a los impuestos? Y dice sí, totalmente. Uh, that is like one of our very public, very core plans of it is perks. Um, you've got a very small amount of that that you saw with the bounty hunter reputations where you get a little bit more mission rewards as you rank up with uh, certain organizations. Um, this would fold under the, the expansion of that into much more varietous and much more interesting perks. Um, th that's actually one of the simpler ones, frankly. Uh, the, 
it might be a specific shop if it's like a little mom and pop store that you've gotten a really good reputation with that specific person or it might be company-wide if there's like a uh, garrity defense then you, you can you know get all of those various stores um but yes absolutely when you're selling uh and and taxes and all of that could be affected by reputation um in certain areas yeah buying and selling uh, we and talked about hiding Claro, eh, eh, comprar, comprar cosas, eh, bueno, que al final que las reputaciones van a ser complejas, van a tener perks que son como, como logros, ¿no? Al llegar a ciertos, a ciertos logros de tal, pues te van a dar beneficios eh, por tener reputaciones, como está pasando ahora mismo con, pues, con lo de Bonte y Hunter y tal, pues que solo habrá para, para, para todo, todo en el verso, en, real, en realidad, eh, pues eh, se puede ver afectado en un punto, ¿no? Por reputaciones. Will give you X item. It generally will more give you access to X item. Yes. And and exactly. that's why when you fall below that rank, we aren't going to take that out of your inventory because that's just rude, frankly. Um, it's that that item might decay to a point where uh, it is broken or needs to be repaired or something, and you won't be able to get it back until you're uh, back in working. Claro, están hablando de una cosa interesante que vosotros eh, dice si, si por ejemplo tenemos eh, eh, necesitamos una cierta reputación para conseguir un objeto que sí que la habrá, ese sistema está diciendo, pues eh, si pierdes esa reputación no te vamos a quitar el, 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 el objeto del inventario porque eso sería rudo, pero si necesitas, eh, cuando llega el punto en que no se puede reparar más, en que haya llegado a su vida, a su vida útil final, eh, pues... Eh, que no serás capaz de, de comprarlo de vuelta, o sea, necesitarás, eh, necesitar, o sea, no te das el acceso en la tienda, ¿no?, para, para poder comprarlo de vuelta. Y cosa que ya digo yo de, de primeras que no significa que no lo puedas comprar a través de un tercero, claro. I, I can't express... Merchant Bambano. <laughs> it's to our progression system uh, enough. It is, it is huge and it's going to be tied into as many things that make sense but it's going to be in in most of the stuff that we work on it's it's going to be a factor and as a follow-up to that uh, subscriber flare thing uh we're talking about many subscriber flares get lost throughout the course sure. of you know adventuring in the person yeah. so we're talking about an easy place for people to go back and reclaim the things that they have already yeah i mean that's like that. that's an interesting you know point I, you know they typically you know with the, the players are just doing like character resets and then getting their stuff back right um reclaiming it like we have talked about you know if you lost it maybe at some point somebody could find it right and then it gets returned to your home location where you can go and pick it up there there is talks about how we can do that for some of those key items like the subscriber things or like the the things that you you know paid real money for or um The, the special stuff, right? You know, the, your your special mount or etc., uh, so to speak. But yeah, that's that's a it's 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 in the plan. I I don't know when that's scheduled or, or it, it's an evolution of the shopping shopping experience for sure. And I know next year is going to be much more uh, economy focused as we kind of get the the quantum uh, tooling integrated into the game more and more. So uh, that's that's what I would like to see that happen, but. It's all going to come down to priorities. Yeah, I, I, I also know. should clarify for Zena Threat, we are going to directly reward you some stuff at certain reputations after That's the true. event is done. Um, but that is something that we do not plan to do long term. That's a yeah. Kind of one off. So that's that's a good point. Like right now, we're we're kind of doing it in a in a undesirable way where we're. <laughs> going through the the analytics data and going ah who's actually completed this and then and then yeah. attributing those things to the accounts the, these are things that we want people to uh be able to one acknowledge and go yep yeah, cool i'm going to this place and i get it and i did it and i know that i did it whereas right now the back end just goes yep yeah, you got it and there's not a whole lot of messaging you don't really you know um uh, once the inventory is localized you're like, well, i go get it well we've got plans for that as well but um Yeah, so hopefully it'll it'll become more fluid and more more tangible in-game experiences with with the reward stuff that they're doing now. Cool. Well, gentlemen, that's it. It's the end of our show. That's it. Congratulations, Thanks. you made it to the end. Uh, yeah. All that's left is for uh, Chad to show us what that thing in the background is and how it works. It's a power cage. It's for weightlifting. <laughs> you gonna show us or? He doesn't know how it works though. So it's... <laughs> All right, that's it. That's it. Uh, uh, why don't you come over and we'll discuss that? Uh, cool. cool. Th thanks for spending your time at the end of our week here on Star Citizen Live. Uh, that was Ch that was Chad. That was Rob. 
that was that was that, uh, can I point in the corner? There we go. That was that was Ben. Uh, we are gonna we're gonna throw a raid. I think we're gonna throw a raid uh, to somebody here. Uh, so uh, there is a streamer going now. His name uh, their name is Nayashi. Uh, Nayashi. Uh, I don't know anything about. Para hacer un raid a un compañero streamer. Uh, we're literally just picking a person and we're gonna surprise him. So. Uh, Ahora os comento so, um, la jugada. When you, when you when you head over there, tell them uh, Chad doesn't really work out. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you next week, I, everybody. No, I'm not saying he doesn't. I'm just saying I've never seen him use it. That's all. I've never seen him use it. I've not, you it know. just sits back there. It's like, goodbye, everybody. I, I see him from here, so it's, he could be a monster. Uh, he's swole, dude. Have you ch check. Current highest bounty I can do right now is uh, about 70k. Solo con dos espectadores va a flipar el hombre. <laughs> Vamos a ver qué hace. Um, by the way, uh, Lanybug, uh, we're going a, a ver, to a ver qué hace, Mashiro a ver qué hace. Amaki. Uh, hello, whoa, what is going on? <laughs> hi, hi everyone. That is a lot of people. Holy crap. <laughs> that is really a lot of people. I see you calibrating, Laney. Yep, you're doing good. Yep, I'm getting a burst of viewers. There's 1,700 people. Over Vale, eh, vamos a vamos a mirar aquí una cosita que aquí tiene que estar. We talked bikes. about hiding things behind reputation. It's going to be in, in most of the stuff that we. Bueno, al final lo que nos estaba comentando es de la Sinotrade y demás, de que, de que bueno, que ahora no lo están haciendo de la forma ideal, que con nosotros acabamos la Sinotrade, nos va a dar un casco y nos va a dar, eh, bueno, nos va a dar objetos por terminar y que lo que quieren es que este tipo de cosas, que no, no hacer el, el tema y, se, y basarnos, en, basarnos en un puñado de datos y decir, bueno, a ver quién lo ha completado y luego entregarle el objeto, no quiere que sea algo más fluido, que realmente cuando hagas el evento pues te dé el objeto en el momento pero que, que eventualmente, pues bueno, pues que esto se irá resolviendo con el tiempo, ¿no? Y estaba comentando algo de... de... Etc. Uh, so, and then getting their stuff back, right? Um, Talking about an easy place for people to go back and reclaim the thing. Things that make sense, but it's going to be in, in most of the stuff that we work on. It's, it's going to be a factor. And as a follow-up to that uh, subscriber flare thing, uh, we're talking about many subscriber flares get lost throughout the course sure. of you know adventuring in the prison yeah. so we're talking about an easy claro está, está hablando de otra pregunta que, que me comentabais de que le hiciera uno de, de uno de vosotros no comentaba que hiciera la pregunta de qué pasaría eso con la con la tienda de, de suscriptores y demás o sea si habría una tienda de suscriptores in game para poder recuperar nuestros objetos vamos a ver qué nos cuentan easy place for people to go back and reclaim the things that they have already yeah done. i mean that's that's an interesting you know point I, you know they Typically, you know, with the, the players are just doing like character resets and then getting their stuff back, right? Um, reclaiming it, like we have talked about, you know, if you lost it, maybe at some point somebody could find it, right? And then it gets returned to your home location where you can go and pick it up. There, there is talks about how we can do that for some of those key items, like the subscriber things or like the, the things that you, you know, paid real money for or. Um, Claro, sí, o sea, ya, ya, ya enganché, ¿no? Estaba diciendo de nada, no, no me perdí nada. Eh, estaba diciendo de, de a la hora de, 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 de lo que es eh, los objetos de especiales, digamos, los objetos especiales, los objetos por los que pasamos, pagamos dinero por los suscriptores, pues si habría alguna forma de reclamarlos y tal, y que son conversaciones que tienen pendientes, como eh, qué pasará pues si, si alguien encuentra eso y te lo entrega a la dirección de tu, de tu hogar, ¿no? En el, en el juego, eh, de, de, de alguna manera... Eh, de que tienen que pues que, que avanzar un poco las stuff, right? you know, your, your, your las tiendas no etc. Uh, so to speak but yeah that's that's a it's 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 in the plan I, I don't know when that's scheduled or, or it, it's an evolution of the shopping shopping experience for sure and I know next year is going to be much more uh, economy focused as we kind of get the the quantum uh, tooling integrated into the game more and more so Uh, that's that's what I would like to see that happen, but it, it's all going to come down to priorities. Bueno, eh, sacamos, en, sacamos en claro dos cosas. Dije que, bueno, que, que es una conversación que está, que está pendiente de hacer eh, a medida que eh, la, la experiencia de tienda pues, mejore, eh, se expanda, ¿no? Y también nos dice, pues efectivamente, que el, que el, el año que viene eh, va a estar, eh, eh, o sea, va a ser un año centrado bastante en la parte económica del juego. 
a medida que las, la herramienta Quantum pues vaya estando más y más integrada en lo que es el, el juego. Así que podemos eh, sacar aquí dos conclusiones de, del día de hoy. Eh, evidentemente la más obvia, eh, quitando esas dos aparte, Star Citizen va a ser la polla y <ríe> mola mogollón. El tema de la carga me parece brutísimo, o sea, por lo menos que, que tengamos esa solución temprana o, o esa solución inteligente ¿no? por parte de ellos de, de poner un, un montacargas eh, del, del que podamos llamar nuestra carga y poder interactuar con ella para poder cargarlo en las naves. Si esto lo podemos hacer ya en la 314, perdón, en la 314, la 315, que pues eh, probablemente salga eh, para octubre o antes de octubre, pues eh, va a ser espectacular. Y, y luego pues tener en cuenta de eh, que las dos cosas que tenemos son, sabemos que nos van a hablar de reputaciones en la, en la Citizen Core, pero bueno, era algo yo creo que esperado, y yo creo que también nos van a hablar de economía nuevamente en la, en la Citizen Core, eh, y realmente pues yo creo que eh, lo, o sea, lo más importante para que este verso pues cobre vida sea eh, pues que, que la economía funcione bien, que vaya fluido, ¿no? Es decir, que, que exista la mecánica de bancarrota eh, pues para darle sentido a lo que es la supervivencia a lo largo del verso y, 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 el, y el querer plantearte objetivos de pues o bien para subsistir o, o para poder eh, progresar o, o, o hacer grandes logros como ser pues desde un... Eh, piloto experimentado que quiere tunear su nave al máximo hasta lo mismo con un piloto de carreras hasta pues un explorador que quiere tener su nave pepino o, o alguien que quiere montarse una empresa una empresa de, de, de transporte y quiere ir mejorando su, su, su nave además o un clan ¿no? que, que quiera que quiera orientarse de esa manera o conseguir naves para disfrutar una experiencia más amplia en el Star Citizen y con esto dicho, chicos, eh, voy a aprovechar que son las 8.05 y, y me voy a ir a, a cenar. Me voy a ir a cenar, que mola bastante, si va el hecho de cenar. Y sí, se viene el live, eh, se viene el live, algo visto por ahí. Eh, decíais que habían cambiado el, el icono de, 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 de aquí o, o cómo, no entiendo. Que algo aquí que habían cambiado o algo así. Eh, que mira el Twitter, vamos a ver, vamos a mirar Twitter. Eh, vale, si consigue 1042 likes liberamos el... Eh, hijos de puta Voy a compartir por aquí el Twitter eh... A ver, que es una chorrada, que van a sacar el, el, el... O sea, sacarían el live igual, ¿vale? Pero, pero creo que el hecho, de, el hecho de que vean ahí que le dais a like Es como como una forma de apoyar, ¿vale? De que, de que realmente pues estamos pendientes de ese trabajo. Eh, verlo más de esa manera porque es evidentemente una chorrada el hecho de que no vayan a sacar el live si no llega a, a 1042 likes, ¿no? <risa> eh... y... y nada, chicos. Que... Qué puta locura eh, el tema de la carga. Me voy a cenar. Qué puta locura el tema de la carga, chavales. A ver si cuando, cuando vuelva a cenar está el live y, y pues ya sería la hostia. Eh, si vais a cenar, buen provecho y nos vemos ahora ahí en un, en un ratillo. ¿va?